Welcome to Mom's Life Made Simple, the podcast for moms who want to go from chaos to calm, from overwhelmed to organized, and to find balance between family responsibilities and personal growth. I'm your host, Chanel Nielsen. Let's make mom life simple. Hey, you guys. So good to be here today with you for this episode of Mom's Life Made Simple. And today we're going to talk all about some ways that you can simplify that will help you to get out of overwhelm, make things just run a little bit smoother in your family, in your personal life, in everything that you want to do. And so the three ways that you can simplify, number one, simplify your space. Number two, simplify your schedule. And number three, simplify your thoughts. We're going to go through each of this, these three and talk about how they can really make a difference for you. So let's dive in. Number one is all about simplifying your space. When you have less stuff, you have less stress. It's really interesting, actually. There have been a lot of studies done that have proven that when there's more clutter, when there's more stuff in a home, that women especially have more stress. And to me, that just, it it almost like, really? You had to do a study about that? Because it just makes sense, right? When you have stuff and when you're the mom, you have to take care of the stuff. Even if it's your kid's stuff, even if it's your husband's stuff, it sort of weighs on you. And for me, the more that I have leaned in to simplifying and letting things go and getting things out of my space, I feel this lightness. I actually love to go through a space when things start to feel like, okay, we're kind of accumulating too much stuff again, to go through an area, whether it's a closet or a drawer or even my kids' clothes, pack it all away for the thrift store or the trash, depending what it is, and get rid of it. It's like the easiest way to lose five pounds, right? You just pack it away, you send it out of your home, and you feel this lightness. There's this lightness that comes, you don't even realize sometimes, at least I don't, what psychological, mental, emotional weight our stuff has. And then when you get rid of it, it's like this deep, deep sigh of relief, like, ah, okay, yes, I don't have to carry that around all the time. I don't have to look at that. I don't have to worry about it. It's just out and away. So Within simplifying your space, I'm going to give you some examples, but as I do, I want you to really ponder your own space. Where is there in your home, maybe it's in your car, maybe it's in your work environment, it could be, you know, not right in your house, but in your life, where is there a physical space that just has too much stuff that you need to let go? So some common examples. One is clothes. Now this could be our own clothes and or our kids' clothes. And what happens when we have a lot of clothes is we have a lot of choices. So when I go in my closet, if I've got, you know, things for the summer and it's winter, if I've got things from years ago that don't really fit, but I spent a lot of money and I really like, and I leave them in my closet out of guilt, if I've got you know, clothes, all these clothes for a special occasion and things that I used to need, but I don't need anymore. All of these different items in our closet bring up different things. Just they have this like minor energy, right? We've got the energy of guilt over here because we spent money and we don't really like it. We've got this energy of regret of things that we shouldn't have bought or this energy of missing something that used to be in our lives. There also can be an energy of shame there that we're like, dang, I used to fit in that and I put on weight or whatever the case may be. It can bring up a lot of emotions. Now, I don't think that every time we go in our closet, we're thinking that through, but it's still there all the same if you think about it. So there's that. The other thing that happens when you walk in this closet and you've got all this stuff, just assuming you have a walk-in closet, it might just be you open your closet. That's a thing. Open your closet and you look at your clothes and you have so many choices, but what do most people do? They stick to the same few outfits, the ones that they really like. And so when you let go of all those things that have this negative energy attached to them that you don't really like, that aren't actually giving you more choices, 
they are just kind of giving you a little bit added stress. It really makes a big difference. The other thing that I do with my clothes is I have season, even though I live in Southern California, we don't have like strong seasons. It's colder in the winter and it's hotter in the summer. So I pack up my shorts and my short sleeve shirts, some of them, and I put those away for the, the winter. And then I get out my long sleeve stuff and what I'm going to need for winter. And I kind of trade it off. And what that does, it keeps my closet small. It keeps my choices small and all of my outfits, everything that I see in my closet is season appropriate. And it makes it easy to decide what to wear in the morning. The other thing that happens is it makes our laundry load a lot easier because when we have a lot of clothes and this extends to all the members of our family, before I go into laundry, let me just say, what I was saying about choices, that's also true for our kids. When they go to their drawers or their closet or whatever, and they're trying to pick out an outfit, it's a lot easier for them to pick something from a small range of choices than an extra huge range of choices. And if we can kind of limit and keep the amount down, it makes it easier for them too. So it's a choice thing. Then back to laundry, growing up, we had a, <laughs> our laundry was in the garage and we would just pile it high. I have a lot of siblings and it would overflow the hamper and it would just be this huge laundry pile and laundry, you know, my, I don't remember my mom ever saying it, but it had to be overwhelming. There was so much. And then she would wash it and put it on the couch and it would just be this whole Saturday thing. We would watch West Side Story or Gone with the Wind and fold this mountain of laundry. That to me is really overwhelming. We have basically, each of my kids have about one hamper full of laundry. When that hamper is full, their drawers are empty. They do their own laundry, except for my five-year-old. The rest of them do their own laundry. And the same goes for me. When my hamper is full, that means my closet's empty and it is time to go and do some laundry. And if I don't, I won't have clothes. But here's the thing. It can't pile up so high that it gets overwhelming. Less clothes in this case, equals less stress, both in the choosing and in the washing. Um, dishes kind of work the same way. When you kind of clear out and you just have what you need in your, in your cabinets, then you can't let the dishes pile up and overflow the sink. You know, when our kids were younger, we actually had more dishes and that would happen. And sometimes it would be, you know, a couple loads of dishes that we would need to run. And you just look at this pile of dishes in the sink and it just feels so much. It just feels like this overwhelming thing that you need to conquer. Whereas now we have a little bit more than one dish per person in our family, but not much. We have enough for company, right? But if we've all eaten a meal and a snack, it's time to do dishes because if we don't, we don't have dishes for the next meal. And so that is actually so freeing. What it means to me is it can't pile up. It can't get out of control when it needs to get done. It just automatically gets done by necessity and it kind of bites the procrastination bug for you. It just makes it so you can't procrastinate. It's a forcing function. It's something that has to happen in order for you to eat. Or if you're like my kids, you can just find a paper plate. They do that too. But you know what? I would rather not as good for the environment, but I'd rather have them find a paper plate than continue to increase my workload and increase my workload because if I haven't gotten to the dishes, there's a reason, right? I have other things going on and I don't like it to pile too high. Okay, the last one of stuff that you can simplify are toys. I remember when I read the book, Simplicity Parenting, it's by Kim John Payne. It's a fantastic read. If you haven't read it before, check that book out. He talks about what having less toys does for our kids. And I think this is a really important thing to touch on because sometimes it feels like, oh, if I, if I live simply, if I get rid of stuff, my kids will be sad. I'll be depriving them. It's not going to be good for them. Where actually the opposite is true. When our kids have less stuff, just like we talked about with clothes, it's easier for them to make that decision of what to do. And because their, their decision-making processes aren't used up in choosing what to play with, they're able to go deep with their play. They're able to get really creative and to find different things. And I definitely found this to be true. 
when my kids were younger and I kind of went through their toys and really just stuck to the basics. What are the toys that allow them to really play? What are the things that I'm keeping because someone gave it to us and I just feel bad or like I just think it's the cutest toy but the kids never play with it. I had We had a lot of things like that. And when I cleared those out and let the kids see these actual toys, it was a really uh, strong difference of the way that they would play. They would go and spend time playing together. And often I found something else really interesting. They wouldn't always play with toys. They would make toys. I did a podcast with Kim John Payne a few years back and we talked about this. And I remember talking to him about noodle spears my kids had made at the time. It was these strands. They would get spaghetti, dry spaghetti out of my pantry and tape that onto something. I think it was a stick and go have these wars with noodle spears. And I, as a mom, I just loved that. I love the fact that they are creating and that their, their play was not just, you know, pressing a button or using this toy and using someone else's creativity, but actually developing their own creativity. And the only reason why that came about is because they had the space to do it. And so simplifying your stuff, what it does is it creates space. It creates physical space in your home. And that physical space translates to mental space because you're not dealing constantly with this low grade, you know, little voice in the back of your mind saying, okay, we got to take care of this stuff. So that's number one, simplify your space. Ali Casaza says something along the lines of clutter is a thief. She says it steals your energy, your time, your money, and your happiness. And so that is why we want to simplify our space. Now, number two is to simplify your schedule. How many things are you running around doing that either are not serving you and your family at the highest level, or you're not enjoying, or they're just too many? Maybe they're good things, but they're keeping you from the better and the best things. The way to simplify your schedule is hard. The way to simplify your schedule is you have to say no. And it can be really hard to say no because we have so many good opportunities. And so it really matters that we evaluate our opportunities. Okay, these might be good, but are they the best thing that we can do for our family? And it, it's hard. It's hard to make those choices sometimes. I was talking to a mom who has seven kids and during COVID, before COVID, they had all their kids in a bunch of activities going here and there. They have sports players and music and all these things. And during COVID, she said it was the most amazing thing. They spent time as a family and it allowed them to grow closer. And they had a really good experience being home for that time during COVID. And I haven't talked to her about it since, but I wondered now that things are open and available again, are they keeping those best things or did they go back to the way it was before? It's tempting. And we want our kids to have these opportunities. And I'm not saying, don't think I'm saying like simplify your schedule and take everything off your schedule because you can go too far the other way, right? But are the things that make it to your schedule, the things that you really want on there, the things that matter? Another way to simplify your schedule is to be where you are. Now this, it sounds simple, but it's actually so hard. How many times are you in a space physically, but your mind isn't there? You're totally thinking of other things. You're totally, you know, wherever you, maybe you came from doing a work project and then you're with your kids, but all you can think about is that email you didn't send or that thing you need to do. One way to be where you are is to have rituals that help you transition. So one way I do this is, when I'm on my way to pick up my son from school, I work while he's at school. And when I'm going to pick him up, I listen to my life vision. My life vision just tells the things that I want in my life. And as I listen to that, it helps me to know, okay, work is done. I'm headed to be with my, my son. And then my other boys come home and it, it's time to put on the mom hat and later the wife hat and just to be where I am. It doesn't have to be anything that formal, but what can you do to shut off wherever you were and to be where you are now? One other thing 
that is really helpful for me with simplifying my schedule is to know that I don't have to check everything off. I don't have to do it all. And it's okay to decide what's going to get done and what am I going to leave undone. And the only way that I personally have found to do that is by prioritizing and saying, this is what matters. These are the things that matter. And if that's all I can get done, then that's okay because I know that I got done the most important things. But it really takes a conscientious and intentional effort to recognize what's the most important and to stick to that because otherwise things definitely will creep into your schedule and you'll find yourself doing things that are other people's priorities, not your own. I've heard it said, I don't know who said this, but they said, be a ruthless editor of your own life. And I don't know if that quote actually refers to like design, but I like it for this topic of schedule. Be a ruthless editor of your own life. Look at your schedule. Where are you spending your time and where can you just take that sharpie and cross off the things, edit out the things that you don't want there. Be that ruthless editor. No one can really do that for you. That has to be your own decision, what you want on there and what you don't. And number three is to simplify your thoughts. So Simplifying your thoughts means that you really need to get clear about what you want and about what matters. I mentioned my life vision. That's the way that I like to do that is to really say, okay, what do I want in my life long term? When I know that, what the big picture is, then how then that can translate to how I live my life day to day. The way that you think is also a choice. And about that, I just want to say a couple of things. So I'm briefly going to touch on the model today. So this is the life coach model. You've probably heard of it before. It says that circumstances lead to thoughts. Your thoughts lead to feelings. Your feelings lead to actions and your actions are what cause your results. So in that model, we circumstances are things that just are. You know, the sun came up today you're listening to a podcast right now, whatever that circumstance is, it's a fact. The way that you think about it, that's a choice. And that affects the rest of what goes on. It affects then how you feel, it affects how you act, and it affects the results that you get in your life. So that simple understanding that what you think is a choice can really help you to simplify your life. You get to decide, no matter what the circumstances, no matter what's happening around you, you can bring it back to that most basic level and realize you get to decide how to think about this. And because you get to decide how to think about that, that will affect how you feel and it will affect the results that you get. It means you're not a victim in your own life. It means you are in the driver's seat. When you simplify your thoughts and recognize that agency to continually choose how you view your world and how you think about things that are going on, it's empowering and it means that you don't have to keep things going the way they are if they're not working for you. And that really, to me, is a huge deal. We will talk about that more in future episodes. But finally, one other thing as far as simplifying your thoughts is you can choose to believe that the life that you want is possible. Belief is also a choice. So we get to choose how to think, we get to choose what we believe, and we get to choose to believe that what we want is possible. And that is, it takes mental effort, it takes energy, but when we can master that, that is going to simplify because we're not fighting against ourselves. We don't have this inner voice saying, oh, what you want is never going to happen. Oh, this is just such a bad situation. We're never going to get out of this. When you bring your thoughts back to that conscious level and you think on purpose of the way you want things to be, then naturally your life will start to follow. Your feelings, your actions, and your results will start to follow and that will make things very simple as your life kind of flows in a smoother direction. So I hope this has been helpful for you to help you simplify those three things, simplifying your space, simplifying your schedule, and simplifying your thoughts can really change the whole energy of the way that your life flows and make it just 
feel a lot simpler, a lot easier, and a lot less overwhelming. If you enjoyed today's episode, please leave me a rating and review. I would really appreciate it and share this with a friend who needs a little bit of simplification. Thanks so much for being here. See you guys. Thanks for listening to Mom's Life Made Simple. Need some help making your mom life simple? I offer group coaching programs using my four-step method called the Mom's Method. This is a process of manifestation, organization, mobilization, and simplification that will give you the balance, progress, and joy you're looking for. Visit ChanelNielsenCoaching.com or find me on Instagram or Facebook at Chanel Nielsen Coaching. I love to hear from you. Reach out with your questions, your feedback, and let me know how I can help make your mom life simple.